Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Alter Ego Podcast. Just letting it rock a little bit because I like to rock and roll all the time. How about you? I love to rock. Good. So hard. Who in the world? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Ryan, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Mark, how are you? Mark is dead. Oh, my God. He got in an accident on the highway, and he he was ripped in half, and it looked like a Jackson Pollock painting all over the exit to get off 22. Oh, God. No, his girlfriend might have got the Rona, so he has to chill. Sorry, Mark. Oh. Maybe next time, baby. Why are you going to put her on blast like that? Well, because she's a weird freak, and she might be have gotten a disease. Mark, you might want to look into that. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Today's episode is brought to you by Ford Supply Company, makers of all natural and organic soaps for men, with scents like Tropical Teakwood, Citrus IPA, Cypress Pine, transient road scum and more i don't know what that is visit their website at fordsupply.com to order online and use promo code alter ego to get 10 percent off your order ford soap real soap no bullshit i don't think i've ever been in the shower and said this soap is bullshit you know what i mean so i figured uh for ford supply we do a little sketch uh me and ryan ryan i want you to be somebody who already smells good Right. And you smell me in the grocery store and I don't smell good. And you're going to pitch Ford soap to me. You ready? And go. (laughs) Smell terrible. Buy Ford soap. Excuse me. I'm sorry, sir. Were you speaking to me directly? To you directly. Yes. You smell. Oh, what do I smell like? (laughs) Hold on. That's me giving myself a smell. I'm just acting it out, but they can't see that. (laughs) I don't know. What do you mean? I smell. You smell, bro. Oh, well, what should I do? Go to forge.com, get you some forge soap. Oh, what kind of what kind of scents do they have? I don't know off the top of my head. Citrusipa. I just know they got You're the citrusipa. The oh, I'm not there. There you go. Citrusipa. The citrus IPA. Wow. Citrus IPA? Smell like beer. Okay. And scene. Great job, Ryan. You're beautiful. Don't change a thing. Now I'm home. My beautiful wife Megan is here with me. I'm gonna come. Hey, uh, honey, I was at the store today buying some fruit out of the produce section and this huge guy walked up and he's like hey bro you stink and i was like what and he said you stink bro you need to get some soap go to fordsoap.com get some citrus ipa i was gonna try it what do you think should i get some absolutely everybody that's listening to this podcast right now should be sold if, if honestly there's there's no way that people aren't already buying so from force i come what is the uh episode about today you ask drum roll drum. oh we need a drum roll um it is about a brand new character that my very good friend at emerald city comics adrian turned me on to because we were walking through looking at all the stuff on the walls and they have such a freaking massive selection so it's kind of overwhelming and adrian's like hey buddy what's wrong what are you doing and i was like i'm looking for a character to, or something to talk about on the podcast something you know i don't know what and he goes we well, should talk about punchline i was like what who and he said, Punchline, it's a brand new character coming out for, this is how he sold it to me. It's a new character from DC. It's Joker's new girlfriend. I was like, huh, okay. And what actually really drew me to it was that, as far as I know, these are her first appearances. Now, we have a couple issues in front of us that we did pick up from Emerald City Comics. Uh, they're so wonderful for letting us have these. Batman 92, which has a picture of Punchline on the cover now if you're used to harley quinn being the joker's girlfriend i'd say at this point that's not really a thing anymore apparently not she got the boot i mean i don't think she got the boot so much as she kind of woke up a little bit you think harley quinn is woke at this point yeah she woke yeah because you know i think she's taken enough abuse uh, bullshit yeah, and bull crap was, from the joker and the joker is not one to say let me go back and get my girlfriend you know what i mean joker to him somebody else. else getting captured or somebody else having some sort of misfortune is hilarious 
yeah. which I can kind of agree with him on, uh, on certain points of that. Um, but what else did we get? We had Joker uh, or Batman 92. What's this one you got here, Ryan? The Joker 80th anniversary. Joker 80th anniversary. It's a 100-page super spectacular. And basically uh, what this is is a, a group of one-off stories with the Joker uh, in mind. Uh, he's not necessarily a star of all of them. He's a star of most of them. But um, okay, I think the best, yeah, they're, they're, they're all just one-offs. But there's one that uh, it's called What Comes at the End of the Joke. And that's the punchline. And it kind of opens up on this young lady who you don't really know her name. They just call her, I believe it's Alexis. Alexis, Alexis yeah. yeah. They just call her Alexis. And you don't really know who she is, but she's sitting in a college dorm. And she's got all these pictures. It's basically a monument to the Joker. And the dean is sitting her down. Spoiler alert. Sitting her down and talking to her because they've had something called Superhero Day. And it's uh, at college, you need to dress as your favorite superhero. And uh, basically, Punchline wears a Joker t-shirt to Superhero Day. And one of the other kids it has taken Sarah issue with this. Bimbo. Sarah. Sarah says that, you know, the Joker killed three of her friends in New York or in Gotham. Like in uncle, New York. I think it's like it her uncle cousin, and her cousin. It was yeah. somebody in her family yeah. and then her cousin's a, co-workers. Officers. Oh, yeah. I don't even think it was her cousin. Even her cousin. I think that's it was her cousin's, cousin's co-workers. co-workers. And Punchline has a, a, a very, I think, justified response when she's pretty much like, so she is is basically baiting likes and shit on social media because right. she's pretending to care about a cause that doesn't directly affect her and she thinks that that's bullshit. And she was like, I'll go tell Sarah myself. Like, fuck that hoe like <laughs> yeah she's she's very uh very straightforward this yeah. punchline which is why when i bring up harley quinn is you know obviously she used to be a respected psychologist who studied the joker and ended up going crazy but then her personality to me i was kind of like eh, i don't know if i'm a fan of this you know what i mean she got on my nerves a lot yeah, me too. And a lot of people didn't like her until she started rebelling against the Joker and kind of being that character in my humblest of opinions. But anyway, just a little excerpt from the comic. And I thought really kind of defined how Punchline is as a character. It says, we grew up with all of you whispering in our ears that we could be anything we wanted. But you never realized the downside of all that. Some of us don't want to be the good guys. Whew, I love that. And it's like, you know, she said, I, I mean, this whole great world you left us is falling apart. And you teach us about the people who actually had the balls to throw some chaos in the mix. Damn, I'm not even going to keep reading because I'll sit here and read this whole damn thing on the podcast. And that's actually kind of funny because, like, the creators of the of the character were pretty much saying, in the world that we're living in right now, we're seeing a lot of young people who get radicalized to really dangerous ideologies online. Uh, and he it basically is referencing... Th- that particular comic, the uh, the Joker's 80th anniversary, says, imagine a world in mm-hmm. which the Joker exists and people out there who think that the Joker's brand of chaos actually does reveal the insanity of how the world is built. People who really attach themselves to the ideology and what it would twist them into and how that would affect the people in their lives as they are lost to this very dangerous ideology that doesn't add up. So that's kind of where that character was born. Yeah, and... People copycatting bad guys, like if the Joker was in the real world, I mean, that's actually happened. Oh, yeah. The young man in Colorado who went into the movie theater and shot people, he was dressed up like the Joker. I think he had his hair dyed and had this monument to the Joker in his car when they came and apprehended him. That's sick. That's stupid. That I mean, obviously, that's that's not something that DC is going for, but they're touching on a very real thing here. You know what I mean? And uh, it's kind of eye-opening that not everybody is going to identify with the good guys every time. No. And to think that they will, I think, is kind of silly. Yeah. I have those movies and things that I watch where you're, like, rooting for the bad guy. Yeah. What was it, Law Abiding Citizen? Like, oh, I yeah. I him to so badly make that happen after what he went through and the way they just pretty much told him, fuck you, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then... You stop him from getting his revenge. That annoyed me. Well, they didn't stop him. <laughs> he got that revenge. Yeah, he did. But you're absolutely right. Uh, 
Joker is one of those guys, though, I've never been one to go, you know, I really agree with the Joker. I think he's chaos incarnate. You know what I mean? When he Ledger said that I'm an agent of chaos. I, t- full disclosure, this is the first DC comic book I've ever read. I've, I've seen, seen a lot too. of DC media. I know a lot of their character histories. I've played some of their video games. I know what their characters, you know, uh, their the powers are. Yeah, their what powers are, what their ideals are, what's important to them. But as far as actually cracking the spine on a DC book, the Joker uh, 80th anniversary is the first time I've ever done that. I've seen uh, Killing Joke, the movie. I like it a lot. I saw Death of Superman. They have some great characters, but this definitely has a lot darker a tone to it than what I'm used to. And like the uh, the uh, the author of, of and creator of this character, uh, James Tinian the Fourth, mm-hmm. to give him his full not props the first or name. the second or the third. This He's is Mr. Tinian the Fourth. Uh, he basically said that he wanted Joker to have a henchman or he, to to have henchmen because he wants. He he's trying to without obviously diluting the Joker because I mean how I don't know how you could but diluting him and making all these supervillains he wants him to have henchmen so that Joker's plan can basically be delegated and is can basically just expand beyond just acknowledgement because he he has other people basically working in the background they're just as psychotic as him and that's kind of where she falls into play. That's what I was gonna say is. You know, he is a little bit more about being being funny and and finding things hilarious. She is not. She do, you don't see her doing a whole lot of. <laughs> no, she's very serious. She's very or so she. Yeah, has no, been so far. Yeah, right. As as far as I've seen, everything about her has been very serious. And let's even talk about like Harley Quinn. Usually has guns, grenades. She's chaos too. And she is out there with the wooden mallet, and she's always getting, you know, real crazy with her enemies or whoever she's fighting. Punchline, uh, first person I've ever seen her kill, she she gasses them. Yeah. Or the Joker venom that makes people laugh uncontrollably until they're paralyzed or they die. She's apparently like a master with knives, too. Like that, she's, and that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Is she carries knives, and she's very precise and very sinister. Analytical, yeah. too. Like, Harley Quinn, not to down her because she is super badass, but she fits on Joker's arm and is seen kind of as her lover, as her girlfriend. Punchline, girlfriend or not, is already his, his, is kind of like a terrifying individual because like the uh, the uh, the artist, George Jimenez, describes her as like when she smiles, she's scary. Yeah. It's not a toothy type of smile. It's a closed mouth grin. She enjoys killing people. She's talented at killing people. And even Joker himself calls her the funniest person he's ever met in his life. And when you read about her... After hearing us talk about her, when you read about her and you see kind of her demeanor in the way that they're yeah. portraying and drawing her, it's very, it's very like, it is the, I just got a crazy ass idea and the corner of her mouth goes up. Like, it's not like, ah, she's just scary. Like her thoughts don't come through like they do, you know, with others. She's hard to read. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, sometimes with Joker or, uh, or with Harley Quinn, what you see is what you get. You know, although Joker does have ulterior motives, you know he's there to either blow you up or do whatever. And, and he's very, very vocal about what he's going to do, too. You know what I mean? That's one thing that I've read about him in this in, in this Joker annual and everything. He's like, you know, I really don't feel like uh, doing this anymore. And he's in the middle of a hostage situation in a bank. He's like, what do you think, guys? I see this article about going down to Guatemala and freeing some... Uh, Freeing some hostages. Yeah. I'm going to go do that. I'm pretty good with hostages. And then they pan back, and he's in the middle of a hostage situation. Yeah. He's like, I'd be pretty good at this. <laughs> I'm like, damn. So, and with, with Punchline, it really it's seems hard, like she's yeah. going to be a good character. And she, I think she can stand on her own two feet. That's what I was just going to say, is it seems like it's very preliminary to say, because the authors, the author and the, and the artist do have further plans for her, obviously, because yeah. she, it's so early on. But I feel like she's the type that's, I mean, we all know that Harley eventually just was like, fuck this. I'm tired of dealing with you, treating me like shit and like yeah. we're on her own. But I feel like Punchline is going to be a little bit more like she's not going to last as long being bossed around and told what to do. And she absolutely could stand on her own. And she's possibly going to be 
like his number two in a sense that she's going to start calling shots. Yeah. Not over Joker. I don't think anybody could really overshadow him for the depth that, of a character that he is already. But I think that she could stand on her own. She's going to be like, no, we're not doing that. We're doing this. And it's going to make sense to him. Yeah. It's not going to, like, he can take her seriously. He can't take Harley Quinn seriously, which I think most readers. It's not that he can't, that he doesn't. Doesn't. Yeah. yeah. You That's know true. what I mean? Yeah. And, and in this Batman 92 that has her on the cover, there is a scene where Punchline and Harley Quinn meet face to face. And she says in there that I'm Joker's partner. And, and Harley Quinn's like, oh boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like immediately Harley kind of has this notion in her mind. It doesn't live long where she's kind of like, listen, we're going to have to sit down and have a girl, girl talk yeah. about this. Because you're not going to want to put up with this yeah. shit forever. Yeah, it is funny because Harley is very much like, when all this is over and we're done kicking each other's ass, let's have some drinks and talk this out. Yeah. Because she's like, you don't know anything about what he's going to put you through. Right. But it's funny that I think it's, is it Catwoman that calls her his girlfriend or yeah. somebody else calls Punchline her girlfriend? Yeah. And and Punchline's response is, I'm his partner. Yeah. And, it, and I know you just said that, but that's kind of the play by play is... She's like, no, I'm not. I'm his partner. Like, we're equals. And I think that, that that's kind of what makes the difference between her and Harley is that she's like, I'm not going to be anybody's do boy. I'm going to fucking stand on my own two feet, and that's just the way it's going to be. But I think Harley knows better. I don't think Joker has a personality to let somebody, like, No, I don't think. Them. And that's why I think I that I do think that. Like, rivals later. Yes, I, and that's what I was thinking, too. Or she's going to be a supervillain kind of standing on her own because he wants her to do something she doesn't want to do or vice versa, and she's going to end up kind of being her own thing. I think and Joker just kill her. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think she is going to be one of those strong-minded characters that's, that eventually is going to see something she wants to do that he doesn't, and she's going to be like, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And then she's somebody that maybe even the Joker has to contest with. Because she might even be the one that kind of breaks him of his I'm the say all be all. I don't know about that. I don't I know, know if that can be done with yeah. the Joker. <laughs> it depends of like, on how they develop her. I mean, it's possible. Mastermind and crazy is just like out there. Like, I don't yeah. see how anybody could really contest with the Joker. Yeah. I mean, especially a girl who's in a college dorm right now. Yeah. yeah. Who's, a, who's a college a student. Yeah. Guy who's. Like history is just psycho. Let's like. let's not kid ourselves and think that anybody that's rolling with the Joker in any way, shape, or form is being used by oh, yeah. the Joker. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't think Joker has a caring bone in his body about anything. Not at all. That's why I love the opening of the Dark Knight. Yeah, love it. Although there yeah. is a part in the one that I just read, which I think was this one, when which nope, is what it's issue? Not that one. It's the uh, it's in the Joker eightieth. Yeah, where he's at uh, Batman's funeral or something like that. And he's like, what yeah. am I going to do this now? Is a, there's the a one one-off person. story in there, yeah, right, where Batman is dead. And, and it's how uh, the city is reacting. It is revealed that Batman is dead and he is Bruce Wayne, which but is he, it's actually does, a pretty cool story because it's narrated by the Joker's Joker himself, opinion of yep. what's happening. But in his mind, he is kind of like, all this time I've invested pretty much all of my energy into this one. Now he's gone. Like, what do I do now? And it's like he, there's a moment in time that you see in his mind that he seems lost. Yeah. And that's, I kind of liked that because you don't see a lot of that out of him. You see he's very like, like you said, I don't give a shit. I'm going to do what I want to do. But without Batman, he's like, who am I? We created each other. Yeah. We, we are who we are because of each other. He now even he's gone. He even calls out Superman saying yeah. that Superman is too stupid and too easy to trick and too easy to defeat. Which I, Superman can squash you in a half of a nanosecond. Like, Superman probably heard little. him thinking that from another planet it was away. just like, meh. Well, he was there. Superman was there on Earth for, for his... Right. Uh, anyway, we're getting off topic. We're not talking about Punchline anymore. <laughs> No, but it's, I, I stir us the wrong way. Yeah, that is. But but that's a good book, the Joker yeah. uh, Joker 80th anniversary. You should pick it up. There's a lot yeah. of good stories in there. Um, and and this is the reason that was so uh, sought after is because that's really the first story where punchlines kind of introduced. Mm-hmm. And then she has her own uh, in Batman 92. So you see her in a couple cameos first. She's in the Batman issue number. 89 she's just like epilogued on the back page and it's just a conversation between her and the joker like via the yeah. phone yeah and then she's in uh year of the villain hell arisen number three and she doesn't have any talking lines in that but that's kind of where you see that she's working with joker 
But then the origin comes out in the 80th anniversary of the Joker, and then her new one just came out. So. And the the way she's illustrated in these is she's somebody of importance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love her like style. I love like her hardass, style. It's so cool. And so, without touching into it, where they're going with her is she is. Uh, uh, She's hired as a new boss under the Joker in lieu of his coming war against Batman after Superman reveals his identity to the world as Clark Kent. And Joker decides that a final <gasps> battle with Batman using his secret identity in play will be fun. So, you mean that he took off the glasses and they finally <laughs> like, you know what? <gasps> You're That's the same Clark guy. Kent. You imagine that? <laughs> That's Superman. Imagine how that pays off. Like, like Superman comes in. Like, and, and he like just stands at the podium all solemnly. Everybody's like, "Woo, Superman!" And then he puts on the glasses. And people are like, "Clark, what the fuck? Get out of the way!" <laughs> and then he takes him off and they're takes like, him off. And they're like, oh, oh, "There he is!" Whoa! <laughs> Wait, Sup- what? Superman! Superman! And then he puts on the glasses again. They're like, "God damn it, Clark! Move! We're trying to talk to Super!" <gasps> oh, <laughs> just ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. But apparently, uh, Joker, again, haven't read a lot of DC. This has really inspired me to have reading a little bit on Punchline because I kind of like the tone of some of these DC well, I'll comics. I'll tell you, Joker War will be picked up. Yeah, and um, yeah, apparently some... Batman Who Laughs is in this too, which yep. is a different alternate timeline where the Joker became Batman. And I, he oh, looks crazy. amazing. Oh, wait, maybe that's somebody yeah. else. That's in I was there. actually scrolling yeah. through Batman Facebook today and saw a uh, video on, the, in, on Injustice 2. And it had the flash in it. Yeah. And I started to read up on the flash. I'm like, I know what they can do, but never knew however like, you know, how strong anybody is, because D C comics to me really wasn't a thing when I was little. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was a Marvel guy. Mm-hmm. So now I've, I'm starting to read I've these. read a lot of uh go back. Wikipedia's and a lot of uh fandoms. you know fandoms and mm-hmm. stuff like that on Barry Allen. He's actually it's funny that I because it's true. I haven't ever read any DC comics and Flash is one of my absolute Who favorite favorites? characters. Same here. Just because of the stuff that he's been in, the games that he's been in, what he's been portrayed as you, or, or uh even the animated series. Yep. The, you know, I've seen a ton of that. So, you know, I, I think it's great Justice and it might be things. time to to check some of that stuff out and give DC a real try as far as comic books are concerned. I love DC. I think they're great. I think their characters are great, but I mean, their books, they, they set a different tone for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For me, sometimes I feel like it seems like a lot of their heroes are super OP. Yeah. And I'm just like, come <laughs> on now. With the exception of Batman. Yeah. I'm just like, ooh. And, but, you know, I think Batman, to me, and to bring up Megan's point, Batman without the Joker, I don't know if I'm as interested. Uh, mm-hmm. Honestly, as I grew up, Grew up and got older. I'm like, yo, he's just a rich dude running around in a cape. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Joker's but, pretty captivating to hold you in. He really is. Because yeah. it's kind of like, how do you beat that? How do you beat that without breaking the one rule of Batman never killing people? How do you how do you stop that? Which is another thing I thought was lame as hell. Yeah. Every time the Joker gets out, he's just that smart. He's just that guy. Somebody either wants to break him out because they want to cause some trouble or he figures it would be fun to try to escape and he does and you know after a while like in the injustice series superman finally goes enough of you dude and kills kills him him. there you go and that's solved yeah yeah it's just one of those things but um yeah there's not a lot to talk about with punchline she's only been out in a few things and and hopefully we'll get a chance to revisit her once she develops a little bit more and we will because like you were saying that she's going to be coming out in joker war and there's also a uh three jokers that's coming out so i am jumping to my own conclusions on how that goes because they've also introduced the name clown hunter which to me sounds like i mean with the name clown hunter it sounds like somebody who's going to be hunting the clowns obviously but i don't know if that means he might be the third of the Jokers because they're coming out. It's called three Batman, three Jokers, and she plays a huge part in that as well. So from mm. what I read, which I don't know how true it is and how long ago it was said and where it is in production, would that be production when it's in yeah, writing? Okay, of course. Uh, they it may, it's going to be like a three issue thing. It's not going to be like a massive thing, mm. you know, a massive sixty different comics in the same series it's only going to be three but supposedly she's going to be a huge part in that um 
and they're excited to introduce that new version of, of Joker into the DC canon. Can I tell you, in looking in Batman 92, yes, what uh, grabbed my attention? Is it the guy on the last page sitting in the uh, yeah. office? Who that's the who, fuck who is, is that? that? That's what I was just going to ask. Who I literally messaged that? you that earlier. After I have I no idea. I saw that, and that actually made me want to watch <laughs> well, the rest of this book. No, that's not what I was talking about. The guy that says, hello, Bruce, please come in. We should talk a little before I kill you. I don't know who that is. Yeah. He's got a weird D on his face, and he's got a white mask. <laughs> you should he's describe it and be a little face. less. No, he's got a D on his face. And yeah, but it's, it's two it's little like a, balls at the, the bottom. No, no, I'm kidding. The it's the letter D. I don't know who that is. Maybe somebody could tell us if they're listening and have seen uh, Batman 92. Who is that at the end who's telling Mr. Wayne he's going to kill him? I want to see this Dark Knight's death metal. What? There's a long-haired Superman with, like, an apocalypse arm. And there's a Batman in a trench coat with spikes and a freaking glaive, like a, you know, a Grim Reaper scythe. Oh, yeah. Let's take a, take a look. Let me see it. Yeah. Look oh, at that. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. That looks really good. And then they go into more about it. I'm not going to read it. Y'all but need to pick it up and take a sneak at what we're looking at. Here. There's Batman on a Harley Davidson looking thing with like a dragon skull on the front of it. It just looks so. It looks heavy metal. So for sure. heavy metal. <laughs> and and uh, Wonder Woman is carrying what I think is meant to be a sword, but has like a laser buzz saw on it. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it looks intense. Like, look at that right there. Bingo. I'll I'll, sh- I'll shoot a picture of this and put it on our Instagram. Uh, so go check Insta. that out and uh, tell us what you think. I definitely am going to want to read this. But then make sure you add us and tell us what you think. It is says we're going, we're going bigger and say? louder. At Everyone me. is going to lose their mind. I say that in my preview voice. That's my preview voice. Don't worry about it. There we go. Uh, but yeah. I think that's a pretty nice little episode for a good old punchline. Yeah, keep a lookout for uh, Joker War for yes. sure, and also Three Jokers, which they're saying uh, there's going to be an unmasking that's going to blow your mind in the in the Three Jokers. So I'm looking forward to it. Personally. I am too. I am too. Rest in peace, Mark. Rip. We miss you, buddy. Uh, thank you to Ford Supply. Thank you to Emerald City Comics. Hell yeah. You can find us on Alter Ego Podcast 2 at gmail.com, uh, on Twitter at podcast underscore ego, Facebook at Alter Ego Podcast, Instagram at Alter Ego Pod, YouTube.com forward slash Alter Ego Podcast. Have a great weekend, folks. We'll talk Bye. to you soon. See you.